here in Frederick, Maryland, and very proud to say I am an American and have been since the day I was born. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm here today on behalf of what we have not heard about yet today, is the health care. The thing that I have been having uh, disagreements with with friends, because I'm very involved in Facebook, and they don't understand why I'm against the bill. It's not the health care that is the concern, it's what's in the bill. Government sets, government mandates, government regulates, government has, government will, government provides, government will decide, government will. This can include an order for end life plans. In 1989, I found out that I have hepatitis C and I got it by helping an innocent person who was very badly beaten and no one else would help him. Then, 21 years later, I'm stage four cirrhosis of the liver with fatty liver disease, not fatty liver, fatty liver disease, there's a difference. But I plan on doing as much as I can, as the Lord willing, let me do this for the people that I fight for most. And that's you. Because for everyone with AIDS, there are 12 with hepatitis C and the government is not doing anything about it. We are in a pandemic, so please get tested. But I encourage you to talk to people and get them to understand about this health care bill because if it does pass, my life is history. At 43 years old, I'm too young to die. Thank you. Well, hello, patriots. Hello. My name is Julie Delphi Westolick, and I'm not running for a single thing. Good. But I did have a point that I wanted to bring up. I've heard people say, oh, I'm not going to vote for so-and-so incumbent because he hasn't done anything for Frederick County. He hasn't brought the pork back to the county. And my point is, good. It's the pork spending that got us in this trouble in the first place. So when you have friends and neighbors and relatives who say, I'm not going to vote for so-and-so even though he's a good conservative because he hasn't brought anything back to Frederick County, that's exactly the guy or the woman that you do need to vote for. Because that's the kind of person who has said, stop the spending. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Just a little talking point. I thought I'd throw out there for you. Thanks. God bless. Hello, folks. Listen, uh, I was listening to C-SPAN the other day, and they were talking about us, us Tea Party goers, and they were wondering uh, how we could exist without a, a leader. And so I got on the phone, I got through, and I said, you don't get it. With Obama, we don't need a leader. He galvanizes us. We are unified because of his socialistic views and his disregard for the Constitution. I said that he was interviewed years ago and he had a belief that our Constitution was flawed. Flawed because it only has negative rights that protects us from the central government. And he said they should have rights that allow us to give them things. That's wrong. Our liberties are sli slipping away. We are in perilous times. The Constitution does not allow the government to order us to buy health care. That is a deprivation of our liberty. Our liberty exists not because of the central government. The central government exists because of our liberty. You know, there was a man, his name was Edmund Burke. He once said, all that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. I see a lot of good people out there. Are you gonna do nothing? Well, then get out there and do something. How are you all doing? I'm not as well versed as some of my preceding speakers, but I guess what I'm here to, to, to ask you all is to hit a knee tonight and pray for my son. My son called me two nights ago and told me, Dad, he's a proud member of our United States military. He's being deployed to Afghanistan next March. Thanks for his service. Thank you. And, uh, 
between the tears on the phone, he told me, he says, and how proud I am that, that how well you raised me, Dad. And, and he says, this is my du duty. This is my job. And, uh, you know, between the tears, you know, we talked about it. But what upsets me so much, we have these bastards in Washington that could give a rat's ass about my son. And I truly believe that a lot of our politicians don't care at all. But I reinforced him and told him, I said, you know, but there are millions of, millions of Americans that appreciate your service. And I just ask you to pray for his safe return. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Cohen. Uh, as you can hear by my accent, I'm not born in Frederick, but my heart is here. Um, I'd just like to say to you all that we have some beautiful skies here today. It's a beautiful day. But the reality is in Europe today, it's a bit um, dusty, shall we say. Iceland has had a new crisis, not a banking crisis this time, but one of the volcanoes has exploded, and not the one airplane, I talked to my brother five minutes ago on the phone, not one airplane is leaving England or the continent, which you know is Europe. And the reason for that is because of the pollution that's going in the air from these um, <clears throat> volcanoes. And here in America, we're trying very hard, like they are in Europe, to get wind power, solar power, and it all is useless because it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change the global warming or anything like that. What you need is, and this is why I advocate, is nuclear power. And we can produce it in this country, the finest nuclear power in the world. We can have three, 4,000 reactors in America, safe ones with the next generation of nuclear power. And we can sell it throughout the world. And we will get rid of that national debt so quickly, and at the same time get cheap energy for any, everybody. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Hey, did anybody else hear on uh, the radio the other day this poor woman saying her son can't get a high-speed dial-up? Yeah. It made me want to cry. Because I don't have high-speed dial-up, so I mean, you know, which politician do I go to sign up for that? Really, anyway, I just want to come up here I just want to say a quick prayer. I don't know if anyone has, but I felt led to do it. So I would ask our Creator, our Father in Heaven, He has a plan for this country and for us. And God is great. And I know He has a great plan for us. And no matter what happens, God knows those who love Him. And I would just ask that God bless us all and God bless America. Hi, I wanted to uh, bring up something that was mentioned earlier about the uh, term limits. I think Joshua Lyon spoke of it. I think all of us know that as long as there are special interest groups and lobbyists, that's not going to happen. So I think what we have to do is take things in our, what we actually have control over, and we really do have the option for term limits already. It's called the elections. And that's what we really have to push. We're not going to get term limits in with the politicians that's in there right now because, you know, they're protecting their own asses. So what we have to do is make sure that we spread the word, that we get out there, we talk to our friends, our neighbors, our family members. I mean, quit being shy about stuff. You have to really be forceful sometimes, but we have to get out there and vote these people out of office on our own because we're not going to get term limits. It's just not going to happen because these people are protecting themselves. So. That's all Thank you for coming out. Please uh, pick up the trash around you if you see it. Drop it in the can. Help us out. Help Gary out. And please remember to stay involved. They do listen to your voicemails. They do read your emails on the local level. When they see a lot of emails and voicemails and people come out, they go, oh, I'm not sure maybe I should vote for this. I'm, I'm going to run again. So please get involved. Watch everyone on every level. God bless you, and uh, Bear Man, take us out of here with God Bless America. Thank you all.